business activity for New York manufacturers, quote, declined sharply this summer, according to the August survey of the industry conducted by the Federal Reserve. New orders plunged, and while there was a small increase in employment, there was a decline in the average work week, according to the survey. The picture is extremely different from what the survey showed a year ago about the manufacturing industry in New York. To discuss the landscape, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Randy Wilkin, President and CEO of the Manufacturers Association of Central New York. Welcome back to the show, Randy. Sure. Thanks for having me. So what stands out the most to you from this latest Empire State Manufacturing Survey? You know, I like to look at both uh, current conditions and future conditions. Obviously, the things have moderated and changed. And there are probably a lot of reasons for that. And they're talked about quite, quite extensively. But obviously, if you look at the general business conditions, that was a meaningful drop. It caught everyone's attention. Um, and, you know, new orders did decline and so did shipments. So I think those are the things that sort of caught most people's attention. I do think it's very difficult for manufacturers to still find workers. Uh, that may also be another reason to moderate. And they're looking, you know, in the short term, figuring out are we heading into a recession or not? And I think that's still undetermined for certain. You mentioned the general business uh, conditions perception, and that uh, number dropped about 40 points from July to August, essentially the biggest drop in the last six years, aside from when COVID-19 arrived. When you think about that perception, does that match the reality? Or are there other metrics that either corroborate that or maybe contradict that? Yeah, I look across the country, there are a variety of indicators. They're still relatively positive, at least for the many of them are quarterly surveys. So we'll, we'll see something coming out again in, in a few of those areas, but many of them were still positive. But I do think the sort of the the impacts of sort of current events, the war, continuing war in Europe, you know, high rates of inflation. We did see gas prices moderate, which I think will help manufacturers because, you know, everything is shipped, uh, uh, you know, using uh, gas. So I think the reality is that um, inflation and the war in Europe have caused people to be on edge. And then, you know, the supply chain continues to be um, disrupted. I think those are all things that sort of weigh more heavily on manufacturers and maybe other industries um, so I do think they're looking into the future and saying, well, may, maybe things aren't going to be as rosy as they thought they were going to be. I'm going to see the growth. But if I talk to uh, members of ours, I find a very mixed bag. Some industries are doing incredibly well. Others may be being hit much more so by inflation. And then some being you know, actually precluded from growth because they can't find the workers they need. So it really is a mixed bag when you talk to individual companies about how their industries are doing. And I think more of this is industry by industry in some ways. And maybe like a general pullback of optimism is kind of what I've seen that maybe it won't be, um, it may be some, some troubling times ahead, but they're just not sure. When you talk about the conditions that might have contributed to this negative perception, none of them are things that happened uh, overnight. They're all things that have been present for, for months and months and months, but we really saw a stark month to month drop in, in July to August. So is that unusual or, or is there some other sort of precipitating event or action that might have uh, caused that uh, really break in the pattern? Well, on top of it, uh, and I didn't mention it, you do have a, an election coming up by the fall. And there's, you know, that, that's, that's not a surprise, though. I mean, that's not a surprise. They knew nothing, that in June. Surprising. They knew it in July. <laughs> yeah. So this, you're right. There's nothing specifically that we can point to say this event has caused this, you know, this dramatic change in, in the perception for general business conditions. And it's one of the reasons why I look at this particular index over multiple months, not just a one month snapshot. We could see that bounce back next month as people realize may, maybe they're, they're over, overcompensating for things that have continued to remain that haven't gotten better. Sometimes as things drag on for a while, people say, well, but these things aren't getting any better. I also think as they look at the response by the Federal Reserve Bank on how to deal with inflation, that could have impacts on the economy. And that, that has probably significant impacts to their businesses. Um, though I am watching the current, uh, like I said, the future indices, and one of the two of them that really are encouraging to me would suggest that they don't believe this will be a long-term impact are, you know, what they expect to do when it comes to capital and technology spending. They, those are still remain very positive. And so I think they see longer term, at least after this, you know, the next window of period of time, they still think that growth in their sectors is going to continue. And they see that as positive. So 
I mean, I really don't, I mean, it kind of sh- surprised me we saw this, this shift because I'm with you that there wasn't any sort of specific indicator. Uh, but one of the things I do know that weighs heavily on people's mind is what will happen to interest rates for borrowing and how will that impact the economy? Will that cause a more widespread uh, recession? And then it, obviously a lot being talked about, will, will the Fed actions to tackle inflation cause a recession? The optimism that you have for the future, is that a long range optimism or is that something within the next six months? Because this report looks at optimism among firms uh, for this you know, six month period. And there was not a ton of uh, optimism uh, amongst respondents uh, for that mm-hmm. six month period. Yeah, my, mine tends to be sort of I'll call medium to long term. Um, we've got a very strong manufacturing base in New York State. And we got some great news with the pass of the green chip bill, uh, and also the semiconductor legislation in Washington. So those two pieces of legislation positions New York State to be in a very good space for what I would call massive generational investments in the semiconductor industry. And as we know, uh, semiconductors is in every industry today. There's nothing uh, that doesn't have a chip in it, well, nearly nothing. I think even our toasters now have a chip in it. So so the reality is I believe that um, the the medium and long-term future looks really good for manufacturing stateside within the U.S. as well as within New York State. So I do think we do have a sort of turbulent period ahead, but I think the, the future looks very bright. Well, for listeners just joining us, so we're talking about the manufacturing landscape in, in New York in the wake of a Federal Reserve study coming out that showed that the industry is not super optimistic about conditions right now. Uh, and our guest is Randy Wilkin, president and CEO of the Manufacturers Association of Central New York. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the uh, CHIPS Act uh, signed at the federal level, uh, as well as we've got uh, a massive state subsidy of the semiconductor industry that was approved at, at the same time. And both of these measures uh, were done uh, kind of at the end of this uh, survey window, the survey was conducted the second through the ninth. I believe uh, the Biden bill was signed at the end of that. And so was the uh, Hochul uh, bill signing. So do you think that as, I guess, news of these activities gets out and the ramifications permeates the industry, that you might see the needle move a bit in the September survey? I don't know if we'll start to see it in the September survey. It will take a while for both, uh, uh, you know, actual uh, pledges to come to New York State. You know, we're looking for potentially a, a significant one in the capital region with uh, right. uh, having a research center there. And, of course, the central New York uh, area, uh, along with Mohawk Valley, looks for have some what I believe will be some, some significant announcements. And if those things start to occur, as the announcements start to happen, as the, the movement starts to happen, then people will look and say, well, geez, New York State is a, a great place to make things. Um, it will be a wonderful place for the future of manufacturing. And then we'll start to see people understand sort of the ramifications of these generational types of investments. But it will take a little bit of time until much like um, you mentioned, the bills were signed. People are just starting to understand what this could mean for two communities, specifically in upstate, but even New York City is interested in this. The mayor's indicated in being involved in the semiconductor industry as it moves forward. So I do think it'll take a little time for this to permeate the, sort of the consciousness of people throughout communities to include manufacturers, but I believe it's coming. When the survey came out, uh, GOP gubernatorial hopeful Lee Zeldin uh, really grabbed onto it uh, with the Long Island congressman blaming uh, the current numbers on Governor Kathy Hochul and the Democratic majorities in the legislature. Is he correct to blame the Albany politicians for the negative responses uh, in August? I wouldn't. I don't. I don't see this as a a uh, you know condemnation of politics in Albany. Um, I see it as just to look at the economic information. I think most of our members in manufacturing in general sort of look at their markets, look at what's going on in really the global economy, and you will actually see sort of I think more uh, troubling signs around in both inflation and a downturn in the economy globally, which is one of the reasons why the manufacturing sector will often respond to global indicators even more so than the national indicators because of its global reach. But then I think, I think there are some troubled waters in Europe and Asia. You know, we had uh, the incidents around Taiwan in China where we know that's one of the reasons why semiconductors is such an important investment. But I mean, the, the international conversation also, I think turned more gloomy. Um, again, the things that had been there and then um, more recently we saw what the, the impacts of what's going on in Asia 
So all these things sort of matter in the mix, much more so than I think what's going on specifically locally or in Albany when it comes to people's general perceptions of what's going on in manufacturing. According to the survey, only modest uh, capital spending and investments in technology uh, are expected in the near future. Is there anything the state or or federal government can do to uh, boost those types uh, of investments or are those the type of things that uh, just come when the industry feels confident and willing to go out on a ledge and, and make those types of expenditures? Well, the key thing is to maintain stability and also you know, the fact that New York State wants manufacturing to grow here. I think that's why the science around the green ships bill and, of course, the federal legislation and then the focus on New York State being a great place to make things helps as people look at what they want to do for the long term. And capital and technology investments really are medium to long term investments, not right. immediate investments. You tend to have already, you know, put within your budget the technology you're investing in next month and of course the capital expenditures you've already committed to. So I, I do think that they are indications for long term uh, how people see sustainability and growth within the within their markets specific to their being in New York State and and how that investments are. Because these are 10, 15, sometimes 20 year investments, especially the semiconductor system we're talking about, decades long investments. So so I think the reality is that um, those, that's why I look sort of more of the future index. I know it's only six months out, but it's sort of the future index is more so on that than, than current to kind of get a sense where are people still optimistic about the long-term impacts? Do they think that they should be making these investments for the future? Um, the only thing that seems to be more difficult for them, that's true across the country, is just workers. And I think, you know, a, a mild recession, for example, could actually make the worker situation improve. Um, as people are, again, looking for these great jobs that are in the manufacturing sector and will continue to grow there. Well, you've been listening to the Capital Press Room, and we've been speaking with Randy Wolken, President and CEO of the Manufacturers Association of Central New York. Randy, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. I enjoy the conversation. Support for the Capitol Press Room is provided by New York State United Teachers, a union of professionals in education, human services, and health care.